welcome to our service of morning prayer together on this Friday the 1st of September. Today the church commemorates Giles of Provence, a hermit. Uh, Giles was a hermit who died in about the year 710. He founded a monastery at the place now called Saint Giles in Provence, which became an important place on the pilgrimage routes both to uh, Compostela and the Holy Land. His care for the wounded and those crippled by disease resulted in him becoming the patron saint of such people, particularly of those with leprosy. Leprosy sufferers were not permitted to enter towns and cities and therefore often congregated on the outskirts where churches built to meet their needs were regularly dedicated to Giles. So we will pick up on the themes of uh, vocations and um, the indeed our vocations of all of us to the religious life uh, later on in our intercessions. Let's spend a moment in quiet as we come before God in prayer. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, creator of all. To you be praise and glory forever. As your dawn renews the face of the earth, bringing light and life to all creation, may we rejoice in this day you have made. As we wake refreshed from the depths of sleep, open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our reading this morning comes from Mark chapter 7, starting at verse 31. Jesus returned from the region of Tyre and went down by the way of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. They brought him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech and they begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him aside in private away from the crowd and put his fingers into his ears and he spat and touched his tongue. Then looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Elphatha, that is, be opened. And immediately his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one, but the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so a short reflection on our reading from Mark by John Perumbala. Jesus continues his ministry in the Gentile territories of Decapolis. It is not the faith of the deaf man with the speech impediment that brings about his healing, but that of his faithful companions. Mark also makes a big deal about the response to the healing from those companions, not from the healed man. The man, without speech and hearing, is possibly unaware of Jesus and unable to ask him for help on his own. Those who can't come to Jesus on their own may need to be brought to Jesus. Indeed, many, if not most people, need some support to turn to Jesus. Speech and hearing play a symbolic role in Mark's narrative. Jesus' disciples show increasing difficulty in understanding what Jesus is telling them. They are in need of a miracle of heart that will help them hear and understand. Our understanding is normally expressed to others through speaking. The companions of the healed man spoke or proclaimed, as in other stories of healing. Believers need to recognise the need to speak about their experience of Jesus. Jesus tells them, as in many other instances, not to tell anyone of this saving experience. This pattern is a common one in Mark. Jesus orders silence, yet everyone talks. Jesus does not want to be known in his true identity until it will be clear that suffering rather than power lies at the core of that identity. We say the Benedictus together. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old 
to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. And so let us pray together. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose Spirit the whole body of the Church is governed and sanctified, hear our prayer which we offer for all your faithful people, that in their vocation and ministry they may serve you in holiness and truth to the glory of your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, the giver of all good gifts, by your Holy Spirit, you have appointed various orders of ministry in the church. Look with mercy on your servants called to be deacons, priests and bishops. Maintain them in truth and renew them in holiness, that by word and good example they may faithfully serve you to the glory of your name and the benefit of your church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have entrusted to your church a part in the ministry of your Son, our great High Priest. Inspire by your Holy Spirit the hearts of many to offer themselves for ordination in your church, that strengthened by his power, they may work for the increase of your kingdom and set forward the eternal praise of your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And the collect for today. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray and to give more than either we desire or deserve. Pour down upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid and giving us those good things which we are not worthy to ask. But through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. And so let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, it's been a joy to pray with you as ever. I hope you have a good week and I will see you again soon. God bless.